While the Euros are taking the spotlight, we will also get to see another huge international tournament take place, the Copa America. While Argentina are the reigning champions and are the favorites to win it again this year, a lot of fans are tipping towards Brazil taking home the title. Ranked number 5 in the world and one of the longest serving global superpowers when it comes to football talent, Brazil is predicted to have a huge campaign this year, and historically speaking they've been quite good in the Copa America, winning it 9 times and beating the runners up 11 times. However, this summer, it seems unlikely Brazil will be able to perform in this tournament. If we go all the way back to the 2022 World Cup, Brazil were tipped as favorites to bring home the trophy and ranked number one in the coefficient rankings. In the eyes of FIFA, they were the best team on the planet. Their squad had the most exciting talent in football, a well-balanced team, good manager, the circumstances could not have been better for Brazil. In the group stage, they almost couldn't have had an easier route to the knockouts with Switzerland, Cameroon, and Serbia in their group. They cruised past Switzerland and Serbia, and I'm sure you remember Richarlison's goal against Serbia specifically but when they faced Cameroon in the final match, they must have been switched off because the entire match was nil-nil into the 90th plus two when Abubakar scored the winning goal for Cameroon. To say the least, it was a shocking loss and it had fans kind of questioning how good Brazil would be when they faced teams of a higher echelon. When they moved into the round of 16, they had to face South Korea. Let's be honest, it's a miracle Korea even made it out of the group stage in the first place. When the match kicked off, Brazil immediately took control and ended up slotting four past South Korea and moved on into the quarterfinals they finally had to play an actual decent side in the likes of Croatia. To be fair, Brazil held their own throughout the match and ended up going the full 120 minutes. But then it came to pens. Marquinhos had a shocker and hit the post to send Brazil home for the 2022 World Cup. This exit was shocking to a lot of fans, but fast forward one year or so, the team has not been the same since. From March 2023 to the time of this recording, they have played 13 matches in friendlies and World Cup qualification. In their group for World Cup qualification, the main teams they should be worried about in hindsight are Colombia, Argentina, and Uruguay. But looking at it right now, they should be worried about every team. Currently, they're sitting in 6th place in the group, barely in a spot to qualify for the next World Cup. Their first two fixtures against Bolivia and Peru, and they beat them no problem. But things started to take a turn after they faced Venezuela. For the most part, Brazil had complete control of that match, but following their initial goal to break the deadlock from Gabriel, they conceded an equalizer in the 80th minute and the game ended in a draw. The next three matches were crucial in cementing their spot in the next World Cup. Uruguay, Colombia, and Argentina. They first faced Uruguay and it was not a pretty game, it was a 2-0 loss. Then came Colombia. They didn't play their best game, they lost 2-1. Lastly, they had to play the world champions, and to be fair, they put up a good fight but couldn't pull together a win and lost 1-0. This was the first time they lost three games in a row since like 2001. The morale of this Brazil team was terrible and they were not working as a team. In general, there's just a lot of issues happening inside the team that are causing them to self-destruct, and I'll go more in depth on those later. Skipping ahead another four months, and Brazil will play four friendlies in the international break ahead of the beginning of the Copa America. England, Spain, Mexico, and the US. First, they had to face the three lines, and both squads heading this match were crazy stacked. As the match began, Brazil were lagging behind and were looking pretty poor. Brazil started to create a few chances but were struggling to score. However, in the 80th minute, it came to 17-year-old Endrig and he scored, giving Brazil the lead and the win. This game was probably one of the worst showings of finishings I've seen from this Brazil team, and they should have been scoring so many more goals. Three days later, they faced Spain, and this match was much more exciting. From kickoff, Spain were on the forefront and had taken control of the momentum in this match. They were getting into Brazil's final third a lot and drew their first pen in the 12th minute, which Raji converted with no issues. 20 minutes later, Danny almost scored to double Spain's lead. A few minutes before Rodrigo scored Brazil's first of the match and it was 2-1 at half. For a change, Brazil came out of the gates flying and we saw Endrick score his second national team goal in the 50th minute to level the game. It was back and forth from there and both teams were gunning for the win. But Spain were awarded a lifeline in the 87th minute and Rodri scored his second pen to put Spain ahead. With 5 minutes out of time, Brazil somehow got a penalty and Lucas Paqueta pulled it out of the fire and gave Brazil the draw. Two months later, they took on Mexico and the United States, which would be a better test of their strength going into the Copa America. Now to give them credit, they did play quite good against Mexico. They took the lead very early and doubled it right after half time, but in the 73rd minute, Mexico found the back of the net for the first time and held their own from there. They would have a huge breakthrough when Martinez equalized in the 90th plus 3. However, it was not over as Endrick scored for his third straight game for Brazil, narrowly bagging the win for Brazil. When they moved on to the States, things got ugly. For context, the States have never beat Brazil in history. The States had recently beaten Mexico and just lost to Colombia 5-1, who are in Brazil's group for the Copa America. As expected, Brazil opened the scoring in the 17th minute thanks to Rodrigo. However, just less than 10 minutes later, we had the US equalize with Pulisic scoring this beauty free kick. Brazil must have been in shock because they could not finish for anything. Rodrigo almost scored a bicycle, Vinicius had a few chances, but it could have gone either way as the US also missed a handful of times as well. Coming out of these two matches, Brazil underperformed by a mile and really showed how many weak points are in their team. To begin, their squad structure alone is terrible. They have a plethora of forwards, however, they lack a punctual number 9. 
They put Vinny Jr. up there, but I think he's more well suited toward the wide areas. Another one of their weak points I would say isn't on the field, but on the sideline. Brazil have been struggling to find a decent manager after the 2022 World Cup. And there's been lots of options and even rumors of some of the most prestigious managers in the world taking the Brazil job. Currently, Dorval Jr. is taking charge of the team, his resume being a bit lackluster. He's been coaching since 2009, starting at Santos FC and bouncing around the Brazilian Serie A. Most notably, his recent spells at Flamengo and Fluminense. However, one pattern that I noticed is that he never stayed at a single club for more than one or two seasons. He has coached 14 teams in 15 years, and you have to wonder why. He has averaged around 1.5 points per game and did win the Brazilian Cup last season with Flamengo, so he can win trophies. But generally, he's unproven coaching this Brazil team. However, a bigger issue they seem to be facing currently is the overall depth in their team. The forwards in this squad are some of the best in the world, but the midfield and fullbacks are a bit concerning. The only true holding or defensive midfielders they have are Douglas Luiz and Bruno Gumarache. If we turn to the fullbacks, we only see Wendell from FC Porto and Danilo from Juve, who do not deserve their spot over the likes of Malo Gusto who was phenomenal for Chelsea this year. I could go on about how many players are missing from this Brazil team that should be playing. Casemiro isn't playing, Gabriel Jesus isn't playing, Thiago Silva isn't playing, and even more Charleston isn't playing. None of these players are injured right now, and I would say they perform better in their club season than some of these other players on this Brazil squad. Even Ronaldinho, one of the best Brazilian players to ever play, has come forward and ripped on this team hard. He was saying in an interview done by ESPN that, I've never seen a situation as bad as this. There's a lack of love for the shirt, a lack of determination, and most importantly, a lack of football. It's a shame. He came out and publicly stated that he was not going to watch any of the games, and he wouldn't even celebrate if they won the tournament. However, there is a lot of speculation that these comments from Ronaldinho are just for an ad campaign, so I can't really speak on the legitimacy of what he said. Additionally, Brazil's path to the final could potentially be pretty difficult. Sela Sal were drawn into Group D alongside Colombia, Paraguay, and Costa Rica. Costa Rica are not expected to make it past the group stage this year. They rarely are, the same goes for Paraguay. Colombia, on the other hand, is a much different story. In recent years, they've been exceptional and haven't lost a single competitive match of football since February 1st of 2022. They beat Brazil 2-1 on their last meeting. They played the US on June 8th, the same team Brazil drew and won 5-1, and more recently beat Bolivia 3-0. It's safe to assume that Colombia is a huge threat to this Brazil side this summer. Right now, I think it's reasonable to say that Brazil will finish second in their group. So when they move on to the first round of knockouts, they'll have to play the winner of Group C, which will likely be Uruguay. The form of this Uruguay team going into this tournament looks a bit shaky, but they are coming off a 4-0 win against Mexico. In this meeting, I would say that Brazil have the advantage of having more than a handful of players that can score goals, where Uruguay's goal outlets are more restricted to just Nunez and a few other players. So if they make it to the semifinals, they're probably going to have to play Colombia, if Colombia do as good as I think they can. And to be honest, I don't think they make it past Colombia, especially right now. So let me know in the comments where you see Brazil finishing the Copa America this year. As always, I've linked my socials in the description, and I'll see you guys next week.